This is the all new iPhone 14 Pro with the A16 Bionic chip, 6GB of RAM, all new 48MP camera setup which comes with a new action mode and all the new design which introduces the newest software feature, the Dynamic Island, always on display and the new 2000 nit screen. I've been using this phone for almost a month now and in this long term review we'll talk about everything you need to know about this phone and in the end giving my final verdict if it is still worth buying it now. So guys, my name is Suzan Jawe and this is the iPhone 14 Pro long term review. I like to start my reviews with the most prominent feature of the smartphone. In this case, it's the cameras. You have the usual three camera setup where the main camera is 48 megapixels with two times optical zoom, a 12 megapixel telephoto with the same three times optical zoom and the 12 megapixel ultra wide sensor. Okay, so here I am shooting from the front facing 8 megapixel camera. So it now features the new autofocus. So if I go out, I'm still in focus. If I come in, I'm still in focus. So yeah, it's a killer feature who want to shoot themselves while using the front camera. So yeah. Shooting from the main sensor at 4K 60 FPS is really great. Nice, stable and beautiful shots, which always are consistent as I hit that button. One thing is for certain, Apple will stay unbeaten in the video department. So this is me shooting at 4K 30fps using the onboard microphone of the 14 Pro. So coming from this, I feel like this sensor just captures more light and makes my shot even more brighter and color accurate, even though I'm just using one key light. So overall, if you're coming from an iPhone 12 or even an 11 or a 10, you will feel a significant upgrade in video quality whenever you're shooting yourself. So I'm shooting at 4K 30fps using the wide angle lens of the 14 Pro and using the onboard microphone. So this is how it sounds like. And this is really great for anyone who wants to shoot vlogging, or traveling videos. So yeah, the wide angle lens is also great for shooting videos and mainly yourself too. Now talking about the new action mode, you can shoot at 2.8K 30fps, which basically crops in a little uses the software to make the shot much more smoother and stable. As you can see, the action mode shot, even though it is cropped, but compared to the normal shot, it is much more smoother. The cinematic mode is highly improved this year, where now it also shoots at cinematic video at 24 FPS, thank God, which is great for people who want to get that cinematic look. While now it also separates you from the background even more and blur is much more accurate. The photos from the main sensor are great. You get really nice, crisp and sharp photos. The dynamic range was consistent whenever I shot a photo of the sky. Photos were nice, well balanced. The camera also does a two times optical zoom now, which is great, but what it actually is doing is just cropping in the middle of the 48 megapixel sensor. But still, the shots look really nice. Same is the case in the portrait shots. The background separation is really nice and doesn't miss a spot. You can now take 48 megapixel raw photo with the main sensor which gives you a really detailed image but at an expense of a larger file size. But the point of shooting raw is so you can edit it afterwards and editing these photos really unleashes the power of these images because you can really go in deep editing. So the wide angle shots were really great as well. It's always great when I point and shoot. There's not much to say about them because they are so good looking. The only thing I care about is an accurate shot, a well balanced photo and nice dynamic range. And this phone gives you everything. Telephoto lens is same as usual but now it can do a 15x digital zoom. Here's a photo of me taking a picture of a flat from inside a building. So this is 3 times, 5 times. 10 times and finally 15 times zoom. You can see the image is really grainy, but still, it's usable. The nighttime photography is really great. The main lens takes really great looking photos. At both 1x and 2x, the photos are always consistent, detailed, and less grainy. However, in the wide angle, the pictures become a little more softer, but again, overall performance in low light is good. Telephoto has the same result as the wide angle, softer images, and then less detail. I believe the iPhone performs exceptionally because most phones struggle at low light photography. It really takes nice pictures. It has really improved over time. And you know what? This action mode is great. You know what else is great? 
today's sponsor of the video, Sophia Learning. Sophia Learning provides a suite of self-paced online college and Janet courses. So now you can get through your studies faster while potentially saving money with almost 40 plus self-paced online courses to choose from. And also, once you're done, you can transfer these online courses to Sophia Partner Schools. Not just that, these courses are also ACE recommended for transfer to many college and universities. You can easily start learning by watching videos and text-based tutorials. So start your journey with Sophia by signing up for free today. Go into the link in the description to get your free account today. Yeah. Talking about the design and display, I know, I know. I talked about the cameras first and design second because design is mostly the same and the most prominent feature were the cameras. But again, going over the design, this phone is 6.1 inch with stainless steel on the side, again, same as the old ones. Frosted glass on the back, again, same as the old ones. The color I've gone with is space black, which looks absolutely gorgeous compared to the older graphite color on the iPhone 13 Pro. This is much darker compared to that one. Flat side design hasn't changed since the iPhone 12. And the only thing that has changed is the camera size in the back, which now looks humongous compared to the previous generations and doesn't sit flat on the desk. Now coming on to the front, Apple took their 120Hz ProMotion display and made it even better. And now you can go down to 1Hz, brightness is 2000 nits, which is massive and highest on any phone yet. I really doubt it actually goes to 2000 nits, but viewing angles outside under the sun are really great. The display also has a new design which resembles a pill. However, when the display is off, you can see the front facing camera and the face ID sensor. You can clearly see how much separated they are and the pixels have surrounded them to form this pill shape which gives a new function called the dynamic island which acts like an active notification center. It gives a really nice animation and you can touch it on the either side to see more information about the current activity. Since Apple has also made the live activities API public, so you can expect more developers to use this feature more often. Now touching this dynamic island smudges the front facing camera which needs to be cleaned time to time. Make sure you get the screen protector and a good case to protect your phone. Since the stainless steel body and the screen these days are much more prone to scratches no matter what Gorilla Glass they have. It is better to protect your premium device since you are paying so much. The dynamic island also comes in between the wide angle videos on YouTube which was annoying at first but over time I got used to it. But watching content at full screen really brings the dynamic island to pop up. But overall the screen is amazing to lay back, enjoy your content with great colors and bright display. The new iOS 16 also brings lock scene customization to all iOS 16 compatible devices and always on display only to the iPhone 14 Pro and the Pro Max. It took Apple forever to bring it to the iPhones that the Android devices have had for such a long time. To be honest, I found it distracting. This is not how I use my phone. Always having that dim display always felt like I had a new notification. So it was always distracting. I just turned it off because it's just my preference and I would recommend everyone else to do it too because you can almost save 8-10% to battery life with this feature turned off. So yeah, thank me later. The performance on this device has been pretty great. Upon daily uses, the phone never missed a beat. 120Hz screen with the A16 Bionic chip really makes the experience much more smoother. From day-to-day -day calls, scrolling, editing photos on Lightroom, baking thumbnails on Canva occasionally, playing games, everything feels super smooth and fast on this device. There's not much to talk about performance these days. Every phone out there, either it's the iPhone, a Pixel or a Samsung Galaxy, everything is great at performing and executing day-to-day -day tasks. Now this leads to the battery timing. I was getting well around 2 days of usage where I took many photos, edited many videos and used social media apps. Upon charging the phone once, I really charged the same day. My highest screen on time was 9 plus hours on a single charge. Which is great for the device. But the battery timing was not that great on iOS 16. But if you upgrade to iOS 16.1, it will be a much better experience in terms of battery life. Now talking about why I wrote the best comes at a big price. Now in the US it's fairly priced, it's just thousand dollars for a base model. But ahem, in Germany 
is $1,500 for the base model. In India, it's almost $1,500 for the base model. In Turkey and Pakistan, it's almost $2,000 for the base model. So yeah, so a phone that is so great and highly recommended, it's really a bummer to see how much prices are changed in the region. They're almost double or even triple in some cases, which really makes it hard to recommend it to anyone then. Well, this leads to the final verdict. So if you're someone living in the US and loves the iPhone, then yeah, go ahead and buy it. It's really affordable for you though. But if you're someone living in South Asia or Europe, look at your use case. If you got the money and you love the iPhone, then yeah, go ahead and buy it. It's a really good device. And also, if you're a content creator who loves to use iPhone or just a phone in general to create content, then yeah, this phone is gonna be really great for you too because I am using it now and it has been a really good experience. If you're a person who just doesn't care about the operating system and would be happy with either an Android or an iOS, then you can look into Pixel 7 Pro or the S22 Ultra or even wait for the S23 Ultra if you want to. Or even go for the older iPhone 13 or the 13 Pro because those would might be much more affordable than this one, in your region at least. Well, it's a bummer to see how much expensive these phones are outside of US. And something that should be accessible to everyone is accessible to only some people. But still, people buy them and people love them. And yeah, in this case, I love the iPhone 14 Pro and it's a really great device. So I'll be making a review of this iPhone 12 and to see that if it's still worth it in 2022 or even in the next coming year, will it be a good phone in 2023. So that's it for today's video. I hope you liked my today's iPhone 14 Pro review. This is my first review that I've made of any phone. And if you liked it, then give it a thumbs up. And if you loved the video, then consider subscribing. It's free. And also, you can check my iPhone 14 Pro unboxing right here. And you can check my iPhone 14 Pro settings video right here. And you can also check my iPhone 14 Pro customization video right here. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Yeah, I guess I can. Yeah, I can. Uh...